In this screencast, I'll show you how to use Apophysis to create symmetrical flames. The first step is to go to the settings window and set it up so that when Apophysis generates a random batch, it generates them as symmetrical images. To do this, go into Tools and Settings. If you prefer, you can hit Ctrl P. In the Random tag, you'll want to go down to the full symmetry area and choose what type of symmetry you want. If I choose an order 6, my flames will have 6-sided symmetry, so that will give me stars of David or 6-sided flowers. If I'm wanting 5-sided flowers, I need to edit that to 5. For type, rotational and dihedral work well. Note that if you choose bilateral, that is 2-sided symmetry. It acts like a mirror and of course none is none. So rotational is a pretty good way to go. And I'm going to just change that back to order of six. I've got a minimum of two transforms, and I'm going to actually take that down to a maximum of five. If you want to have more as a maximum, that's absolutely fine. For the variations, you can set all of them. You can clear all and set your favorites. It's probably not a good idea to just have linear set, as that will give you flames that all look surprisingly the same and can be a little bit boring. If you have any flames that do cause you trouble, you probably want to get rid of them or at least untick them and Stretchy Pants does and that's because of the space in the name and I just know it won't work if I do it so I'm going to just take that one out and then what I do is I go Control B and that will generate a new set of random flames and there they are. So the next step is really easy you simply go down in your batch of random flames until you see something you like. And if this is your first time using Apophysis, that might be enough. And you might decide, hey, I'm going to render it. It looks cool. I'm really pleased with this random process. But I'm almost certain that most people watching the screencast want something a little bit more. So normally I just settle on something that takes my fancy. Like that one. And if it is your first time using Apophysis or you are a beginner, what you can do is use the mutation window to get a flame that you feel is attractive. And what you do is you simply say random trend and you can choose any of the variations on your machine. So random's as good as any. And just click on a flame that you think will look good. And you can pretty much keep going at this until something works. Sometimes this approach is really useful, sometimes not so much. If you don't like what it did, you can just click out and go back to that random flame. So the idea is if I do mutate, I just need to know which of the flames I chose and unmutated and I can go back to it in the list and it will be fine. One of the things I do want to do is just change the gradient because that black and white gradient didn't work for me. Double clicking will randomize the gradient. So at this point we just want to choose something that gives us an idea of how the flame might look if we had various colors and chances are we will change it later. So once again if you're keen use the mutation window or not. Some days it just doesn't work as well as it should. Notice that if you do go back to the original it does tend to kill the color. Never mind. Another way to get more out of your flames is to use the FX button to bring up the transform editor. And what this does is it lets us see all of the various transforms and variations. And sometimes less is more. So what you can do is you can delete transforms and then control Z to bring them back and see what it does. And I often delete most of the transforms.
Moving transforms around obviously gives some interesting effects. And one of the things that you might be aware of is if you take a particular transform and you make it into a straight line, rods in a triangle, you end up with straight stringy lines in your fractal. If you do want to move a transform away and you can't seem to grab it, you can use the triangle menu to help you do that. And I'm just going to shift that red triangle a tiny bit over so that I can grab it and then move it. And the basic idea is you just play until it looks good to you. Once I finished playing with this, what I ended up with was a much simpler flame where I only have four transforms, three of which are linear and that controls my symmetry, and one, the red one, which I ended up getting rid of all the variations except for spherical, and you can see down at the bottom it tells you when I mouse over what it is, and that's not a bad thing to happen. The only disappointing thing is that when I look at it, the gradient has become pretty much monochrome which isn't what I want. So one way of fixing that is to go flame and then just say calculate colors. If that doesn't help and in this case it hasn't, what I need to do is I need to simply put in a linear transform and then go back and recalculate my colors by going flame calculate colors. And You can see that that has given me a little bit of pink and if I want more pink I just move my gradient around. Now if a pink and blue flower doesn't do it for you, what you do is you'd keep on randomizing until you found a gradient you liked, or if you've pre-installed one of the gradient packs, you can keep experimenting once again until you find something suitable. One of the important things to realize about fractals is that even relatively small changes to our transforms can have quite big impacts on what the flame looks like. So all I did to go from what you saw before to what you see now is I decreased the size of this transform. See how that looks like the flower that we had? And simply by decreasing the size, we get something quite different. Once you have got something that you like, the next step is to, of course, render it. If you don't think it looks completely great, you can change it. One thing you might want to do is zoom out, which is making the scale a bit smaller so that we can see more of the flower. Or if there was something particularly attractive about that flower, you might choose to zoom in. What I normally do is set up the flame so that the entire flower is there and then I render it really large so that when I make my final wallpaper I've got quite a few options over how it sits on the page. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to render it and then I'll show you how to change that into a suitable wallpaper. To save I just hit the save button and I'm going to call it purple disk flower. And what I do is I give it a name and I also save it in a particular place. If you want to change the place where it's saved to, you can just click on that button to browse. I'm then going to render it and these are my normal render settings, except instead of doing it 400 by 400, I make it really large. I use a density of 1000, filter radius of 0.4, oversample 2. If you don't know what any of these means, I'd suggest you stick with these, but if you do know, you might wish to play, and that's cool. And then I hit start, and I'll be back in about 14 minutes and 40 seconds. 
So I'm back and my fractal has rendered. I've opened it in my graphics software, which is PaintShop Pro. If you don't have graphics software, you might wish to download GIMP, that's G-I-M-P from GIMP.org, which is much of the same functionality as what I have. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the layers property to put in a background layer. And what that means, and I'll just show you that's what my layers palette looks like. The one in GIMP is a little bit different, but the principle is the same. I'm then going to grab my fill tool, and pretty much all fill tools look like a bucket. And I can fill it with straight black, or I can change it to white, or I can even put in a gradient fill if I wish. This image is actually very high resolution. You'll notice I'm looking at it as one sixth of its actual size. And what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to have a little bit of a play and make it into a wallpaper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a new image and I'll just edit that back to pixels. And I want it to be 600 by 1080 because that's the size of my screen. And I'll just zoom out so that you can see what it will look like. I'll put in a back background and then I'll paste my flower as a new layer and what I can do is of course I can then position it so that it's slightly off to one side so that it still looks good and I always bear in mind that rule of thirds which seems to help. Then all that I need to do is sign it. And I'm going to save it and then upload it to Flickr. So hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. And if you've gotten this far, well done. I'd be very interested in seeing what you create. So please feel free to either comment on the video or see my Flickr stream. And let me know what you've done with it. And just in case you're wondering how to find me, my Flickr stream is flickr.com slash photo slash nzdzeni. So thanks for watching.